today we had closing arguments in the case, uh, which has finally uh, come to a conclusion. Uh, the plaintiff's attorney went first in the case and repeated his sort of uh, theme of the case, which is that this was an experiment gone wrong, that the Depew was a product that was rushed to the market uh, without adequate testing, uh, that the documents showed that the company uh, was trying to beat the competition to the punch to be one of the first companies to come out with a metal on metal hip and that they didn't want to lose market share and that's why they released the product without adequate testing. Uh, he also talked about uh, the fact that uh, in order to promote this hip uh, the doctor, um, the Pew paid uh, millions of dollars to what they called design surgeons. Uh, the plaintiff's attorney discussed the evidence that was presented in the case that indicated that the surgeons had very little to do with the design of the hip, that in reality they were paid millions of dollars uh, to sell the hip. Uh, they were giving presentations to salesmen, uh, they were going around the country uh, at conferences talking about the benefits of these hips, and in return they were given a royalty interest, they were giving, given a piece of every pinnacle hip sale that occurred. Uh, he also talked about the advertising for the hip uh, and how the advertising was based on uh, studies uh, that were in, in what the plaintiffs described as bogus studies, that there was false data in those studies, um, that the studies were designed in a way to not really indicate how these hips um, would perform in real life. Uh, he also talked about um, the, the fact that this PIN study, which was the sort of the most important study uh, that Depew had concerning these hips, um, was really flawed in the sense that it only measured uh, uh, as a failure situations where the cup was removed uh, from the patient. Uh, so that was uh, a problem because with pinnacle metal on metal hips, when somebody has a problem with the hip, rarely is the cup removed. Uh, typically, a surgery is performed and the liner is removed. The metal liner is replaced with the plastic one. Uh, so the whole purpose and, and intent of this study was designed to mislead. At least that's what, what the plaintiffs were arguing at trial. Um, on the issue of damages, uh, what was interesting is the plaintiffs did not ask for a specific amount. Uh, there are six plaintiffs. They talked about medical bills, um, but there was nothing done um, with respect to um, how much the plaintiff's thought should be awarded for pain and suffering. Um, what the plaintiff did do was he asked the jury to award what they believed in their judgment was a reasonable amount to compensate the plaintiffs. And in doing so, he asked them to use uh, what he called Depew dollars in doing that. And as an example, he talked about uh, something called the Deferred Prosecution Agreement. And this was an agreement that Depew entered uh, with various governmental re regulators who had accused them of paying bribes to doctors in exchange for them to uh, implant their devices. Uh, they paid an $84 million fine for doing this. Uh, during the trial, Depew brought in a witness to talk about that Deferred Prosecution Agreement. And the witness said that Depew did nothing wrong that the allegations were false, and that the only reason they paid this fine was to, quote, get rid of a headache. Uh, and so what the plaintiff's attorney said is that this is a company that pays $84 million to get rid of headaches. In other words, the cost of an aspirin to this company, $84 million is like buying an aspirin for them. And so he asked them, asked the jury, to think about damages in the context of Depew dollars, and those are Depew dollars. Uh, the other thing that happened uh, during the trial is that, or during the closing, is the plaintiff uh, attorney asked a series of questions that he wanted the defendants to answer. And this, these were questions that he brought up at the very beginning of the case during his opening. And according to the plaintiffs, the defendants were unable to answer these questions uh, satisfactorily. Um, one of the questions was, why didn't they test the pinnacle, metal on metal hip, before they released it to the market? Why didn't they test it in people? Uh, the second question is, why did Depew use dishonest marketing? 
Um, most of the witnesses who were confronted with that marketing almost had to concede that the marketing was dishonest. And there really was no valid answer given to that question. Another question is why did uh, Depew make payments to doctors? And he described them as illegal payments, meaning that the doctors were bribed uh, to use the product and to sell it rather than to actually design it. Um, another question was why did they cover up the problems with the hip that occurred in England in 2004? There was lots of testimony about that during the trial, that there were problems that arose in England in 2004 by a doctor. Uh, Dr. Tony Nargle raised these problems uh, with Depew, but Depew uh, either ignored them or uh, attempted to impugn the integrity of Dr. Nargle, uh, indicating that he just had he was the only one having a problem with these hips. Uh, and then the last question he asks is why didn't Depew ever send an alert out to patients and doctors about the problems? Uh, if Depew knew there were problems. Why didn't it tell doctors to send patients out for blood tests? It's a, it's a perfectly legitimate um, uh, question to ask. Uh, it's a precautionary measure. It could have been taken. It could have helped a lot of people who went years uh, without knowing that their hip was causing a problem. Now, on the other side of the coin, uh, the defense attorney gave his closing uh, immediately after the plaintiff gave his and uh, essentially, uh, what was unique about his closing is he, the closing did not really attack uh, the individual plaintiffs or their doctors. Uh, in the past trial, there was an effort made uh, by the defense, a, a big effort, to, to argue that uh, the plaintiff's injuries uh, were not caused by the hip, that it was something else, that the person really didn't have metallosis, um, that or that the problem with the patient was that the doctor put the hip in at a bad angle uh, or that the patient had some immune disorder or was allergic to the hips. Um, during the closing, the, defendant, uh, the defense attorney did not make any of those arguments. What he did argue was that the development of the metal on metal hip, the pinnacle, was reasonable, that it was the right thing to do, it was progress, um, that the company didn't rush the hip to the market that it took seven years to develop and design the hip before it was released. Uh, he also talked about clinical testing and said uh, that testing the hips in people uh, may not have revealed the problems with these hips because a lot of the problems happen over many years and that uh, progress would be stymied in medical device uh, development if manufacturers were required to test the devices in people for 10, 20 years before they could release it to the market. Um, he also talked about the advertisements. The fact that the plaintiffs were focusing so much on the ads really didn't matter because none of the defendants um, actually, I'm sorry, none of the plaintiffs' doctors actually saw those ads. None of them relied on those ads. Uh, there was testimony at the trial um, that many of the doctors um, wouldn't admit that the ads made any difference to them, that what they relied on was clinical evidence and studies and published literature. Uh, he also talked about um, the fact uh, that this hip um, was something that doctors wanted, uh, that there was a problem with metal on plastic hips and that doctors wanted some alternative and this was just an alternative that they gave and that doctors knew the risks. The doctors knew that these hips could shed metal ions. And that was really the focus. The focus of the uh, defense closing was that the company acted reasonably. Um, it's, in other words, this is just the cost of progress, that sometimes these things happen when you're developing new medical devices that help people. Um, on reply, uh, the, the plaintiffs get the last word. So plaintiff's attorney got to respond to the defense attorney's arguments. And what he talked about um, were two things on reply. The first was he said, look, uh, we're not trying to stymie progress. What we're trying to do is make sure that products are developed in a reasonable way. They should be tested, uh, risks should be uh, dealt with and examined. And if there are risks, they should be fully disclosed to the doctors. And the argument that the plaintiff's attorney made was that that was not done. 
he also talked about um, the amount it would take uh, to really punish Depew. So the question was, uh, in the context of punitive damages in a case like this, how much will it take to alter Depew's conduct going forward? How much money would it take to get their attention so that they do not do this again? Uh, and so during the trial and during closing, there was evidence admitted that Depew, or I'm sorry, Johnson & Johnson as a company, Depew is a wholly owned subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, but that Johnson & Johnson as a company is worth $72 billion. And to put that in terms that's sort of easier to understand, $72 billion is actually $72,000 million. It's a lot of money. Uh, and so what he did was he said, look, let's think about somebody who did something wrong that needs to be punished. And let's say they have $72,000 in the bank. And what would happen if you uh, find them $500? That would be a, sort of a slap on the wrist. Most people would, if you had 72,000 in the bank, you did something wrong, you'd pay the 500 and, and move on. You'd be pretty happy that that's all you had to pay. Now, in the context of Johnson & Johnson, $500 would be $500 million. And so that sort of puts into context uh, the kinds of dollars uh, that we're dealing with here. Uh, it's a lot of money. Uh, so that's how the closings went. They were, um, uh, both attorneys I thought did a very, very good job of uh, laying out their case. Um, the jury will now begin deliberations um, and hopefully we'll have uh, some kind of decision fairly soon. Uh, the questionnaire and the jury instructions uh, for the jury is quite lengthy, so it may take time. Uh, there are six individual plaintiffs, so uh, each person has to be looked at individually and a decision uh, rendered for each plaintiff. And it's possible some plaintiffs may win and some may lose. Um, but each plaintiff is considered individually. Uh, so it could take a while before uh, we do have a verdict. Uh, if you have any questions about the ongoing trial or what's going on, feel free to give me a call. Uh, you can reach me at the phone number on the screen. Uh, we also have an online website uh, you can go to. Uh, where we have a questionnaire, and if you fill out the questionnaire, a lawyer will call you right back and uh, answer any questions that you might have.